Hi everybody, hope you're well. Hope you had a fantastic half term and you're ready and raring to go to get back involved in the Q, uh, Q House Sport Games uh, um, post half term from now until the summer holidays. Um, over the next six weeks, we'll be looking at some tennis stuff and then moving on to some athletic stuff as well. So we're looking at the two different activities. Today, what I want us to look at is just some sort of movement stuff, make sure we're able to get into the right position and then try and move on to kind of some hand tennis, which is actually quite difficult trying to be accurate and trying to be consistent with that. The first little bit is kind of, we're gonna do some um, hand-eye coordination stuff, not too dissimilar to what we did before half term with the cricket stuff, but we're trying to add that tennis movement. So it's gonna be a kind of moving towards the net for a, for a volley and also moving backwards for either a forehand or a backhand grand stroke. Okay, so I'll try and talk you through it as we, as we go. So back to the trusty bifold doors that I've got in my house. Okay, start quite close. Now set position, so our set position for tennis all the time. It's feet square and we try and get to that position just before we make our moves to try and get anywhere on the court, okay? So always coming back to this position there. We're gonna start with the ball in two hands. We're gonna start with a big ball to start with. Any big ball will do a football, whatever. Okay, it'll make it a little bit easier just to get going. It's gonna be a two-handed throw against the wall. As it bounces back, I'm gonna get back into position where I play my forehand, side onto that wall. I'm gonna catch the ball here with two hands, throw it back, and when I throw it back, I'm gonna follow my throw in catch it two-handed off the wall. Okay, so there, let it bounce. I'm in my forehand position. Okay, throw it back into the wall, and I'm there, two feet together, catch it on the floor. Then we're gonna throw it so that it falls, bounces on my other side, so it's as if I'm getting into a backhand position. Still side on, still catch it after the bounce, and I'm off the wall, and I'm in there nice and quickly in that split of my feet, shoulder width apart, okay? So I'm going to do a couple of those really quickly now just to show you and then I'll explain what will we'll come up on the screen what you have to do as the challenge, okay? So progressing on from that with the big ball um, and doing our ground strokes and our volley position. Okay, we're gonna move on to a smaller ball, a proper tennis ball if you've got one. If you haven't got a proper tennis ball, use any kind of ball at all. Okay, anything that you used for the cricket last half term. Um, this time you're also gonna need something to use as a target. This is my daughter's favorite inflatable cow from the garden. Okay, and that is gonna be placed about a meter and a half in front of the wall or door that we're using. Okay, and we're still gonna be getting this position to volley, still gonna be getting this position to forehand and, ground, ground, and backhand ground stroke. And we're gonna catch in one hand touching this guy on the head or whatever you use your target touching that and that ultimately you're going to see that that's going to score your points okay so here goes just in front of the door there you can see him just okay so i'm still in here right there forehand one-handed in here and i touch him on the head okay so i'm there back backhand one hand there in there touch him on the head there forehand there fully Touch him on the head, there, backhand, there, volley, touch him on the head. Okay, explanation will come up now of what you need to do and what that's gonna look like. Okay, but ultimately the score is gonna be how many times can you get in and touch your target, whatever it is, whether it's a chair, a box, a small inflatable cow. Okay, you can just see his ears poking up there, just in front of the weights. Whatever it is, the score will be how many times you can get in and touch his head. So if you drop the ball, if you throw the ball away woodly, that's gonna slow you down how many times you can touch his head. Okay, and I wanna know how many times you can do it in a minute. Do it five times and, and, and you're gonna input your score for the best score you get in one minute. Okay, it'll all be explained on the, on, the, on the screen very, very shortly in text. Good luck with that, it's a bit more difficult. You'll get a bit of a blow on as well, it's quite tricky. Right, gonna move on to last little bit of pure hand-eye coordination stuff before we go into the more movement-based stuff. A um, bit more tennis specific. This is just a bit of a challenge to challenge, test our hand-eye coordination. So what we're gonna try and do is take two balls, drop them, cross our hands over and catch them before they bounce. Okay, to start with, just get yourself moving. 
what I want you to do is drop them and catch them. So drop them at the same time, catch them before they bounce. Okay? If you struggle with that a little bit, you can let them bounce, catch them, drop them, let them bounce, catch them, drop them. And you're trying to up the speed. One, two, three. I dropped it because I looked away at the screen there. Drop, catch, drop, catch. Get our hands moving. Do that for a little while and practice, okay? Then, potentially, okay, we drop them, let them bounce, swap our hands over. That was more difficult because they don't bounce at the same speed because this one's soft. Okay, so drop and bounce, cross your hands over and catch them. What we're trying to get to is dropping them, don't let them bounce, and cross your hands over to reclaim them. A bit like that. Ooh. Nice and simple. So the challenge is going to be, you're going to do five minutes, okay? You're going to work for 30 seconds, trying to see how many times you can successfully drop and catch them without them bouncing. Okay, then you'll rest for 30 seconds, do it for another 30 seconds, rest for 30 seconds, do it for another 30 seconds. Five minutes, so you'll have five sets of 30 seconds where you'll work, trying to drop and catch them. Obviously, if you spill them like I did once, it will take you time to go and get them, that's going to slow you down. You won't get as many So, what we're trying to get to with that challenge is the following. Drop and catch before they bounce. Don't look up when you're trying to do it, you won't be able to do it. How many times can you do that successfully in 30 seconds? Then rest for 30 seconds, give it a go five times. Five minutes of the challenge after you've practiced it. Plenty, good luck. Right, so we're now going to look at some bits around movement, um, a bit of jumping and hopping and change the direction, which is obviously really, really key to the tennis. You're not going to need any balls for this, you should need some kind of markers or anything at all, some marks on the ground. So you can see behind me there on four, one, two, three, four. Um, paving clubs on my patio, I've done four big circles. You can use anything at all to mark that. If you've got some chalk at home, then do that. Um, do it on the pavement, you can do it wherever you want, really. So make sure you've just got four markers or four zones that you're going to use. Okay, and we're going to go through five different exercises that are going to help our movement, our agility, our change direction, and our kind of power um, when we're playing tennis. Okay, so the first one, nice and simple, um, is two-footed, and we're going to be jumping forwards and backwards. Make sure our feet land in those circles. Yeah, so we've got that split start that we spoke about at the start. Okay, and all it is is there. Try and keep your head up. Two feet together, landing and taking off together, forwards and backwards. Nice and simple. We should all be able to manage that. Keep your hands up in front of you. Really, really simple. Okay. Second one that we're going to be looking at, we're going to bring our feet together, we're going to be going around the square. Okay. So I start back in this corner here, two feet together, I'm going to go as quick as I can. Chain going all the way around the square, nice, simple. There back to where I started. Could not be more simple. Okay. And then all we do is we turn it but we reverse it. So now as I've turned a couple of times, go the other way. Back to the same start point. And then that way. Okay. Battery. It's running low. So there. Perfect, again, really, really simple. Next one, you're on one foot, okay? You're gonna be going. So we're now gonna get a little bit more complicated. We're gonna go onto one foot, so hopping around, okay? The first exercise is nice and simple. Starting that same square there, my right foot. And we're just gonna keep going around. I'm trying to make sure that every time I land, I'm inside a circle, I'm not over here. I'm right in the middle, trying to make sure that I propel myself forward into those circles. If you miss it, make sure you fix it and get yourself into the circle. Okay, that's number three. Number four, what we're going to do 
is starting my right foot in that square. So now I'm going to start on my left foot and start on this square. Still one footed, just the other foot going the other way around the square. Oh, I missed that one then. Wasn't concentrating. Okay, so from here, forward, back to the start. Lovely. So that's number four. The other foot going the other way. Now, similar to two, we're going to go round one way, back around the other. Okay, but now we're going to split, flip, um, flip between our two feet and do them both on our own, on our one foot. So, starting in this square, or starting in this marker, go round the square, change feet, change feet, change feet, change feet. And that is number five. What I'm going to ask you to do is do each of those for at least 30 seconds, then rest for 30 seconds, then do the next one, do 30 seconds, rest for 30 seconds, then do the next one. Remember, there's five. So work, rest, work, rest, work, rest, work, rest, work, rest. That will take you five minutes. Okay? I want you to be thinking about uh, our control, our balance, our speed, seeing how quickly we can do it. Okay? I also want you to do this five times so it's gonna be 25 minutes of work I don't mind you resting a lot between the sets to think about I think you can do it well so it's gonna be 25 minutes about our hopping jumping our changing direction which is gonna be really really beneficial for not just our tennis but all of our sport okay enjoy it Right guys, so I had these grand plans for setting you um, challenges regarding um, forehand, backhand, ground strokes, playing effectively hand tennis. So we're using our hand as a racket. I discovered that I'm really bad at the backhand stuff. So I'm gonna leave that to you. I'm gonna explain what I want you to do. Instead of me chasing the ball around and looking like a bit of a Muppet, I'll leave you for that. Um, and you can just watch me do the forehand stuff and then you can try and do the backhand and the alternate stuff. Okay, so. We're looking at our ground strokes, and the majority of our ground strokes are going to be playing topspin. So I'm going to want us to be using our hand again, like I said, to hit the tennis ball. Going from low to high, brushing over the top of the tennis ball to get that spin going forwards, which will get it to dip over the net in a real game. Practicing for when we actually use racket. Going from low to high over the ball, when we play our ground strokes. Okay, we're going to start in our set position, okay, in our split set position. Square where the ball will be coming from. Bounce it, get side on and play a forehand ground stroke. Nice and simple to start for us to practice. So I'm there, place the ball I'm going to play with. Okay, I'm going to drop the ball and play my ground stroke. Nice and simple. Drop the ball, side on. You see we go from low to high over that ball. You'll also notice that I transfer my weight from my back leg onto that front leg as I come through. Okay, so start my split starts. Drop the ball. I'm trying to catch it as it comes off the ball. Hopefully, you should find that pretty simple, okay? And then we can start to look to move. So guys, I'll turn the camera on now because we're gonna add a throw to the wall. Okay, so I need a little bit more space, a little bit further away from the wall. I'm going to throw it against the wall, then it'll bounce. I'll get side on and play my proper ground straight technique, coming from low to high, brushing the back of the ball and trying to follow through towards my opposite shoulder there. So I hit it and follow through up to hit. Okay, let's see how I get on. So in that stance there, facing my wall, facing my door, throw it against, side on. Got a bit of a dodgy bounce again, keep getting those today. There. A bit more control there. Not great, dodgy bounce, throw it. So, get back, set, start low, swing through, brushing the back of the ball. We're trying to apply top spin as much as we can. Practice that for five or 10 minutes, trying to be as accurate as we can. Try to get onto your weak hand. So instead of a backhand, you're trying to do it with your weak hand. For me, be my left, it's really, really poor, okay? I want you to practice that and get better at it. What you can do to support that, my left hand is all over the place. Can use my strong hand, my right hand, just hold my wrist, 
like you're doing a double handed backhand. Okay, and swing through, doing exactly the same thing, low to high, trying to brush over the ball. Again, practice that five or 10 minutes, trying to get accurate at either dropping it and playing our backhand with the support if you need it, of your strong hand, and then throwing it against the wall, letting it bounce, and then playing your ground stroke again. Okay, those of you that master that, I want you to try and play alternate shots against the wall. Let's see, I'll have a little go, it might be pretty laughable. So I'm right back here against forehand. Oh, straight away, tail will bounce off the door frame. Okay, so off the wall, forehand, backhand, forehand. Ooh. For your challenge, there's going to be three different boxes on the um, Microsoft form. Okay, and it's going to be how many successful forehand ground strokes can you do in one minute? Okay. The second box will be how many successful backhand ground strokes can you do in one minute? And the third box will be how many successful ground stroke, um, alternate handed ground strokes can you do in one minute? Okay, so it goes from forehand, which should be the easiest, backhand, which is more difficult, more challenging, and then the alternate, which is really difficult, I found really difficult, and I'm, and I'm sure most of you will find very difficult. Okay, if you don't get onto the alternate, it's fine, but do please give it a go. Okay, and I actually want you to do each one five times. Okay, so I want you to do a minute of forehands five times, a minute of backhands five times, and recording your score, and a minute of alternate five times, recording your score each time, okay? You only put the best score into the window on the Microsoft form, and I hope that makes sense. Okay, please, please, please give it a go. It is difficult, you'll find it more difficult than you imagined, I, 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 think, I think. Okay, but it's challenging, it's testing, and it'll really, really work on your coordination and your skills. So give it a go and enter the best minute score for each of the three challenges on Teams. Have good fun with it, get involved. If you've got more space, you can get out to the park and you can actually get a racket out and go and practice your ground strokes over a bigger distance, do it. We'll be looking at different skills each week, looking at our um, basic coordination this week, basic movement, that sort of split starts at the start and our basic techniques of the ground strokes, forehand and backhand. Okay, it's really important we're going low to high, brushing the back of that ball, from getting side on, Okay, and finishing our follow through at the opposite shoulder. Okay, that allows us to generate a bit more power. As I said, have some fun, enjoy. If you've got any issues, got any questions, drop me a message. Cheers.